Welcome to Gamify Your Remote Classroom, and today we're going to be looking at quizzes and Quizlet. I hope that's what everybody's here for. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm retired, I'm president of Contisol, and I'm a technology enthusiast. And today I'm going to show you just two ways to gamify your classroom remotely with quizzes and Quizlet. And we're going to start off with quizzes. Now I have taken screenshots of all the screens for you so that um, when you get an account, you'll know exactly what you're going to be seeing. So with quizzes, the most important thing to remember is how to spell quizzes. And that otherwise you will get a site that you don't want to get. <clears throat> so take note of the way the word is spelled. It's Q-U-I-Z-I-Z-Z. -Z -Z. And um, that will be the most important thing to remember. <clears throat> so when you first go to quizzes, if it's your first time, you will see a screen like this. If you already have an account, you can go to the upper right corner and click on login. But if you don't have an account, you're either going to want to here start for free or click in the upper right uh, here is in the middle or click in the upper right corner where it says sign up for your first time. Um, one thing that I really love about quizzes is that there is no paid version. This is completely free and you cannot pay for it even if you want to. So make sure that you, the first time you're going to sign up or start for free and after that you will log in. If you, ha okay, so when you sign up for the first time, like I love Google and I don't like to remember a lot of passwords. So if it allows me to sign up with Google, I sign up with Google. Um, that way you don't have to remember any password and um, you don't have to remember which name you used. It's always Google when possible. So the next screen that you'll see, and this is when you're signing on for the first time, is that you'll have three buttons here. The one on the left says, as a teacher, the one in the middle says, as a student, and the last one says, at a business or nonprofit, of course, you're going to choose teacher. Um, I don't right now encourage you to have your students sign up with quizzes. You don't need them to sign up in order to play your quizzes. So um, you can also sign up as a parent or other, just in case you are not a teacher or school administrator. Okay, if you use your Google email, you will not need to do all of this, but if you don't use your Google email, you will need to put in all your account details. If you decide on a password, please write it down so that you don't forget. And then at the bottom of the screen, you will click on continue. When you click on continue, it's going to ask you to select your organization. You can, so I live in Pismo Beach, and so San Luis Obispo County is my county. So a lot of the schools that come up for me are in San Luis, Luis Obispo County, but I don't teach there. So you can search for your organization by name, or this is what I do at the bottom of the screen here in purple, you see can't find your organization, add it here. So if you can't find your school, or if you're not in a school, you can just add it there. Okay, so now that you've gotten in, now I understand we want to see the word adult education there, and it's not. And I think um, we will get adult education there at some point if more adult educators log on and say that they want that. So what I do for now, since I'm not teaching, I'm doing professional development. But if you're an adult ed teacher, you could do university educator because universities do teach adults. Um, so I'm sorry about that, but we still have a lot of work to do in, in uh, proactiveness for our group of people that we are that we need to be there as well. So at the bottom in purple, you'll see there's a done button at the bottom of the screen. Click on the bottom of the screen for the done button and you will then get to the next slide. Okay, so I picked professional development. 
And the reason I, they ask you this information is because it's going to automatically look for stuff that fits your category. So when I get to my first quizzes screen, it's going to look like this for professional development. But you don't need to use any of the quizzes that show up here because you can, you can search for a quiz. So let's go through what, what's on the screen because there's a lot of text and some of it might be pretty small. Um, so along your content is in the center here and I'm my featured content is either mathematics or educator professional development along the side you'll see a bunch of things you'll see create a new quiz find a quiz my quizzes reports classes collections and memes settings and log out my favorite feature here is find a quiz. It allows you to search for a quiz on any topic and you can even search your book and find quizzes that teachers have already made. So I did a little search myself. Um, and so I don't know if you all know that I wrote, I co hosted a series called Project Success. And there are people who have made uh, sets of materials for Project Success. Here I took up ventures. You can see there's a lot of stuff in ventures. Yes, Donna, this is the Gamify OTAN trading. Um, and then standout, I did stand out. But any book you're using, you can actually search for the book in the game in quizzes, and you will find games that are already made that you can tweak. So you don't have to uh, you don't have to start from the beginning. Okay, so once you click on a, let's say you wanted to click on taking a stand, chapter 18, um, I did Google Apps, you'll see this information here. So I can see uh, in the middle of the screen that there are 10 questions here. Um, I can edit or delete any questions by clicking on the edit button on the top right of the screen. If I click on the edit button, I can make changes to this. I can delete questions. I can change the time right now. It's set for 30 seconds, but you can change the time. Um, and you can assign it for homework or you can play it live now. And you also, you can practice yourself, but unless you have an account, you wouldn't be doing that. I want to say that the assignment for homework is really fantastic because you can send it out to your students and they can play it before they come to class. Um, they can play it after they're finished with class and you can see their improvement that way. You can also play it live if you want, but I think in the world that we now live in, assigning it for homework is really great and it gives them a leaderboard. So when they play the game, they'll see where are they fit on the leaderboard. And if they like where they are, they'll stay. But if they want to be number one, they might play the game more than one time. So let's go to the next slide. Um, you can change how, so here I went, I clicked on the edit button and now you can see that there's an edit button for each question. Edit question number one, edit question number two, edit question number three. Um, the red are the wrong answers and the green are the right answers. Yes, Barbara, this is, I wouldn't make the quiz on the smartphone, but it's easy to play it. We'll be, you'll be trying this out on your own phone to see how easy it is. But you can use it on phones. Um, so you can edit the uh, amount of time that they have. I can't remember exactly all the different seconds there are, but I think there's up to a minute or so. Um, and oh, you can also copy. So let's say you have a question that's similar on both of them. You can copy the question and, and, and just re change the answer. So you can copy. That's this on the top right next to edit is copy. Um, you can add new questions if you want. And you can teleport. Now teleport's really cool. When you click on teleport, you get, they, quizzes is intelligent, smart software. It will know that you're doing Google Apps here. And it will look through all of its documentation to find all the questions about Google Apps and will display it for you. And you can just click on a question and it automatically comes into your test. So 
it's really cool. Oh, sorry, I just zoomed away. Okay, so teleporting is really cool. I encourage you to try that. I, um, I go ahead and, hey, Suze, just go ahead and say you're a university teacher. That's what I would do on that question. Okay, I probably should tell you, he wants to know what to do about uh, adult ed, which we covered already, so. Okay, so let's go on. Don't want that. All right. So once you have um, edited your questions the way you want to, <clears throat> you're ready for to, to start sending out the test. But before you send it out, there's a lot of settings you need to know about. So before I go on, somebody wants to know if I can elaborate on teleport. So um, yeah, I can just show you actually. Let's just do it. So I'm gonna go not to this one. I'm gonna make a new screen and I'll show you teleport. Susan, this is Anthony. Yes. There's also another question about um, if you're duplicating um, games or questions, um, is that what you have to do first in order to edit it afterwards? No, and here I am. Everybody, my screen? Yes, correct. Okay, so um, I'm going to just go ahead and edit this. And you see, I don't need to duplicate it at all. It's here. Um, I, I can duplicate a question, but you don't have to duplicate like you do in Kahoot. Here's teleport. So it, let's see what teleport brings up. This is going to be very interesting. So here are all the different quizzes that have Google Apps, and I can click on any one, and let's say, let's say I want this one. I just click on this add button right on the right hand side of the third section, click add, and it's now going directly into my quiz. I think that's pretty cool. And here are the minutes. So you have five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. You know, I think 15 minutes is a little bit long unless you're having a serious discussion question. And you might, if you're teaching, you know, high school subjects and you have, want students to, to do some critical thinking and a team, you might want 15 minutes. But um, I don't think, usually I do 30 seconds. And if it's a really difficult question, I might go 45 seconds. So that's teleporting. I hope I answered that question. So let's go back here and um, back to present. Okay, so we're going through the settings now. And there are a lot of settings. Um, so I like classic, especially now that we're teaching remotely, it's kind of, unless you're doing it on Zoom live and, and break, it's, it's hard to do it as a team. Um, I don't usually use these games to test students. I use it mostly for uh, formative assessment. So I know where my students are when they come into class and where they are when they leave class. So, um, oh, sorry. So um, these are the first sections. There's a lot of settings. So I made two screenshots for you. Um, you can give a setting for how often you want, how many times you want your students to take the quiz. If you're doing it as a test, you probably want to say once. But in my case, I, have, I think students learn by practicing. And if they want to take the quiz more than one time, that's fine with me. So I usually put it to unlimited. Um, name factory, this is to protect uh, high, mostly high school students if they use names that are not appropriate. So um, I usually turn this off. If you want your students to only use quizzes generated names, not their names, then you want to turn this on. That's up to you. But it's only. They can't make use their own name. Frances, she asks, is quizzes a Google app? No, it's not. Um, it is a independent game. Um, so that's there. Now show answers in game. After the students take the, take the quiz, the, do the answer. I want them to see whether they got the answer correct. So I turn that on. If you don't want that, you can turn it off. Show answers post game. Um, allow students to review questions 
and answers at the end. And I leave that on too, so they can see the ones they got right and the ones they got wrong. If you don't want them to see that, you can just turn it off. Um, here are some more settings. These are your power ups. Um, I like all of these on because it's fun for the students. So students get bonus points and other fun abilities. This is automatically generated by quizzes. Timers, students get to see the timer so they know how long they have to answer the question. So I turn that on. Leaderboard, it shows where they come in order. Students love having a leaderboard. A leaderboard has also been shown in research to motivate students to uh, try harder. Um, I love shuffling the questions. So if the students take the test twice, they're not gonna get the questions in the same order. And I also love to shuffle the answer options. So the answer options will change every time. So they can't really memorize where the answer is or what the question is because it's coming at them in a random order. Um, also, I love redemption questions. So if students get a few questions wrong, it will give them those questions back again to redeem themselves. And the last thing that I love are these memes. And I'm gonna show you the memes. There's, you can make your own memes. It's really a lot of fun. And the students, when they get a correct answer or an incorrect answer, they will see the meme that you made. So Mercy asks, does teleport add all the questions from that quiz or only one? One by one, it's going to answer the quizzes, the, the teleport in. You can't, don't teleport the whole quiz. You search for a whole quiz and then you edit the quiz and you can teleport extra questions in if you want. So here's what, so this is what a meme looks like. So you have correct memes and you have incorrect memes. On the top here, you can see left side is correct and the right side is incorrect. And you can click this plus button to add um, a picture. And you see here, I have put, you can add your own pictures. These are mine. So these are my correct memes. Susan is happy, correct answer. Killing it, that's also a correct answer. And then I have my incorrect memes, like this one here is incorrect. It's try again with a little sad teddy bear. So you can make sets and you can have sets of memes. So let me show you some of my memes that I have here. Um, let's go, let's finish my quiz. I added that one question that I reported. Here's my test. I'm gonna assign it for homework right here. And here are my settings. Everything is the way I like it. It knows who I am, so it keeps the settings that I had the last time. And here are the different kinds of memes that I have. And as you see, I have all different kinds of memes because <laughs> I love memes. So here's the ones I made for OTAN. So these are the correct ones. Well, when you're playing the game today, these are the ones you should see, I hope. Okay, so back to the game. We're gonna actually play a game so you get the feel for this after we go through all the settings so you see how I did everything. Okay, so we are ready to play this game. So you're gonna use your phone now, okay? And um, you're gonna go to your browser on your phone and you are going to open your browser, whatever it is, Chrome, Safari, Firefox and you're gonna put joinmyquiz.com in your phone. Joinmyquiz.com. And then you're gonna enter a game code and the game code is 465794. So I will wait and see when we get enough people to play the game, I will play the game. So we've got a bunch of people. This is gonna be fun. Remember, we're doing Google Apps, so. <laughs> no, yeah, we're doing Google Apps on this one. So we got a lot of people. Everybody's getting in really, really fast. Yes, M Michael. The game can be accessed on a laptop, a Chromebook, a phone, a tablet, a computer. Actually, I like the phone better than the computer. It's easier to win. Okay, shall I start, you think, Melinda and Anthony? 
there's quite a few people. Sure. Okay, we're gonna start. Now I'm gonna I I I I'm not gonna leave the screen up for you. This is very different than Kahoot. When you play this game, you don't need to use this my screen at all. You just use your phone only. Um, but the screen gives the teacher information. So what I'm gonna do is not let you see the screen until um, you're finished so that you don't get annoyed by it, but, um, but you'll see it later. So I'm gonna start it and then I'm gonna cover it up. So you should be getting the questions on your phone now. There's 10, well, there's 11 questions, I think, because I added one. There were 10. Take you a few minutes to play the game. And like I said, while you're playing, I'll just talk. Um, you can search for any one of your textbooks. You can search for grammar points. You can search for vocabulary points. You'll find stuff that's already been made that you can tweak. So Innocencia asks, can you show how a student can use a Zoom screen and play the game on the iPhone? I don't recommend doing that. I recommend that you use the Zoom time for real uh, conversational practice. Um, I really recommend that you send these games out to the students in advance or after class to review or to show you what they know. Um, you can, I mean, it's really hard for students to use Zoom on a phone and then go to another app. That's really like, overkill, even for me sometimes. It's so easy to lose the Zoom screen. And I really think teachers should be using their Zoom time. It's a fraction of the time they usually meet their students. Use it for real live, like group practice and practice with the teacher. And then do these activities at home. Let the students do it. These are fun. Um, generally, your students will do them because they're fun. And they like to be number one. <laughs> and the leaderboard will do by accuracy and also by speed. Well, somebody who is a Google nut will be very good at this since I didn't really teach anything. So, and if I see that a student is first and they made no mistakes and they, they have a streak, like I love memes, she has no mistakes and she has all the 10 questions, I will say that she does not need my lesson. <laughs> and Megan also does not need my lesson. So now I'm gonna show you what the screen looks like. So this is what I am seeing as you are taking, doing your Zoom, your, your little game. Um, so this is how I can see it. And you can see what, how everybody did and what mistakes they made. And you guys did like a really great job. So probably um, I would not have to spend too much time on teaching you the stuff that was in the questions. Um, you can also just show the top five. if you don't want to show the whole class. And also you can see it question by question so that you can get an idea of, of um, what's in there. So Dennis, yeah, it was, you're, you learned something, right? Dennis, that's the whole idea behind this is that you, were, you didn't understand it, so then you learn it. So it's okay that you don't make it uh, get a great score the first time. I like to do this before my class. I send it out and usually people have a really hard time. Then I teach my class and then I send them out another, a similar one after class and you can see great improvement in their scores. So that is, I think, um, what I have for quizzes. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Um, yeah, let me grab back the screen here for you. Okay, so now you're seeing my screen again. I, I'm not gonna play these videos for you. They're in the PowerPoint, but um, I know that sometimes people, oh, so you can share it. These are all the different ways that you can share the link out to your class if they're using Google Classroom. Remind, Canvas, Schoology, Microsoft Teams, and you can even send a tweet out if you want. There also is the link that you can send out as a text message to your students so that they can actually just click on it. And right here, that's all they need. It'll, it'll get them into the game. They don't need to do the join thing like you did. Okay, Francis, teleport means bringing questions into your quiz from another person's quiz. Uh, yeah, I can show you, Beverly. How, I'll go through real 
quickly the steps on making a new quiz. I don't usually make a new quiz because I like to use quizzes that are already there, but let's just say I wanted to teach the past tense. So I'm going to look for a quiz first, past tense. And here's one. It's got seven. How many questions are here? I think it's got, let's see. It's got, is that 17 questions? A lot of questions. I like 10 questions. Oh, it's got 10 questions. Good. So I'm going to look at this. Now, if I don't like it, I'm going to be able to edit this. So um, I click on the edit button. And um, I can edit the picture here. I can click this and put another picture. I can change the name of the quiz. Um, I can decide whether it's visible to everyone or just visible to me. And so when I'm working on a draft, generally, I will be just visible to me. Yes, I will, Monica, don't let me forget. I will show you the, how it, the record shows you. There's reports for you. Um, and then if I want to change, each question I, I want to change, so maybe I don't want to use Cancun. Um, maybe we want to say I went to a museum. Okay, save. And then this is kind of British English, right? So we'll change it to vacation. Where did you go on your last vacation? So that's how, this is how easy it is to edit. And you can just change a whole question, save. Now, if I don't like a question, um, I can just trash it right here. So let's say I'm gonna trash this question, just trash it. Then let's say I wanna add a new question. I'm gonna, I can teleport, find some other questions in past tense. This is why teleporting is so nice. Let's just add this question in, multiple choice, and then go back. And it's going to be question number 10. This is the question I just teleported in. OK, then when I'm ready, I like what I have. I finish my quiz. And I'm going to keep the name there. I'm going to save it. And I have to pick, I'll pick a other there because it's not professional development. And here's my quiz. And I can now sign it for homework or play it live. Like I said, in the situation we're now finding ourselves in, um, I don't really feel that we should be playing these games on Zoom. I really think you should be having the students play the games before or after the Zoom lesson. So let's take a look at the reports. So I'm going to go here to reports. These are the reports that you get. Here's the one that we started an hour ago, the one that we just played. I got accuracy. You get to see your accuracy. So let's click on it. And I can see everybody's report. I can download this to keep it for my records. I think it's downloading. Let's see. There it goes. It's on the bottom of my screen. There we go. And I've downloaded it twice. But see this nice Excel file that you get? You can import it into your records. It's just a beautiful file. Let me show you what it looks like. It might take a second or two to open. So um, Bet Bettine asked this question. I, I want to answer it because I think it's a great question. Editing the quiz will only change it for me, but the original stays the same, correct? Yes. The person who wrote the quiz, when you open it in your account, you're actually opening um, in your account and it's your quiz. So their quiz stays the same. You don't have to worry about them losing their quiz or you changing their quiz. So uh, it's, the Excel file is taking just a short time to open up, but I, oh, here it goes. Not too bad. Let me bring it over here to show you how beautiful. I really want you to see how nice these files look. So easy. Just click download and there, there you go. Look how beautiful that is. You have your incorrect questions, your correct questions, the ones that didn't get to attempt. The questions, you have each person individually, how they answered, what their percentage was. And it's all in a beautiful Excel format that even I don't know how to make. <laughs> and it's all done for you, so it's great. So um, I want to show you that I have some videos that you can watch. I'm not going to be sharing them today because it's just a video and you can 
It's at the end of the PowerPoint. So there's one here on teacher tech. It's probably going to start playing, but I really don't want it to play. And then the next one is here on about using how teachers, how should teachers use quizzes? And it gives you some pedagogy. And then here is how to use collections. And collections are really good when you're teaching multiple classes so that um, you can um, actually have your collections all organized in like folders of type. So I see there's a lot of questions. Um, Susan, do you, yeah. want me to, do you want me to help you go through these questions? Yeah, and you yeah. You may want to kind of re-show us again how to do some of these things. OK. Sounds okay. Good. So one question is um, the quiz questions themselves, are there only multiple choice questions? Um, yes, I think in quizzes they're mostly true, false, or multiple choice. Okay. Um, can you show us again also, oh, do you want to look again at, on the quiz questions? Oh, I'm in the wrong program, sorry. Quizzes.com, okay. I want to just make sure that it's, uh, let's see, I'm going to create a new quiz just real quick to see what it shows up. And I'm going to give it a name test. And we'll say this and we'll go there. Oh, so these are the choices. We have other choices. Multiple choice checkbox. Checkbox is, the difference between multiple choice and checkbox is that checkbox allows you to check more than one answer. Fill in the blank which is tough because you have to make sure you have all the options for students who make mistakes in, uh, in case and such. Then you have a poll, so you can actually do a poll on this, and you have open-ended, which I don't know how they would score that, but that would be hard to score, but it, I've never done it, so you should just research it. <laughs> um, can you show us again how to get to the reports section? Okay, so you're gonna, um, Log into your account. Okay, so right here on the left side of your screen, there's a toolbar that says reports. If you click on that, you'll see reports for all the games you've played. And I have like a lot of reports because I do this a lot. Um, another question about reports uh, is, does it track quiz scores over time? You would have to do that by having, an, you know, taking the Excel uh, spreadsheets and, and merging them. It doesn't, it doesn't do different, it doesn't do that. Okay. It does each quiz that you play with the students is an individual Excel spreadsheet. Um, another question is, is there a limit on the number of quizzes that you can have going at one time? I think you can only do one quiz at a time. So, um, yeah, I don't do classes because they have to, this collection, I think you can only do one at a time unless you have more than one account because it gives you a unique number. Okay. okay, and then there are a number of questions about sharing this. So can you show us the share options again? But okay. I think some people don't quite understand like, okay, you know, depending on the, on the program I'm using, how I actually can share it. Like, what is it that I'm actually doing to share with the students? Okay, so the game that you play, that's what your students would get when they, when they, um, when you share with them. So let's go back here to the Google Apps one and let's assign it for homework because you have to do that first before you get anything to share. And then you have to decide when you want them to finish it. Let's say that if, I, if I'm sending this out, today on Thursday and my class is on Monday. I want them to finish by 20th. And then here are the settings. I, I go through all my settings to make sure I have it. And then I pick, if I want a meme set, I pick a meme set and then I host my game. This is all, you have to do all of this before you share. Then I'm gonna host the game. And now I can share a link. I can go, I can give this, which is the joinmyquiz.com plus this code, or I can give them a link like this. And um, you can go to Google Classroom and send it out that way. You can send it out from Remind. You can send it out through Canvas. You can send it out through Schoology, Microsoft Teams, and Twitter. And here is the link. So if you copy this link and you send this link to your students, all they have to do is click on the link and the game will open up for them. Does that answer the question? I, 
Yes, I believe so. Yeah, I, I think people weren't quite understanding that if, you know, if I have this link, what do I then do with it? But you just yes. told us that you can post it in a number of places, depending on what uh, programs you're also using with students. Yes, and Beverly wants a link to the videos. You will get those. They're in the PowerPoint, not to worry. Okay. Um, okay, and then can we go back? There still are some questions about this teleporting business, uh -huh. and then can you also show us again how to add a question? Okay, so my, here's my test. Let's go back to the Google Apps. And okay, so I'm going to edit this. So I click on edit. Uh, yeah, I can leave. And here is my teleport. So it knows that I'm doing Google Apps. So if I click on teleport, it's going to search through its database of all the quizzes that people have made and show me all the different Google Apps that there are. So I can go through, I can go through each one individually. Um, um, I usually look for something that's similar to mine. And then, so here, let's say I pick this one, which Google apps allows me to create a quiz, poll, or survey? I like this one. So I'm gonna add this into my quiz. So I just click this add button. Now I had 10 questions. I think this will be question number 11. And when I do that, here it is. I can edit it some more. Or if I change my mind, I can delete it. I can change how much time I give. I can decide to change its format. I can do multiple choice checkbox, fill in the blank if I want to change that. Or I can just say, okay, it's great. It's question number 12. It comes in right at the bottom. Does that answer it? Um, I believe so, yes. It's very easy to pull in questions from other teachers' tests. You basically don't have to make your own test. You can just pull in what other people have done. And then when you're done, you have to make sure you finish the quiz. Don't exit, finish the quiz and then you're ready to send it out, share it. And Susan, just to clarify, when you share that link with students, it is a live quiz, right? You're not, you're not sharing a link with them to a quiz that is not live, correct? I would not, no, I wouldn't do it from here. I, I would do it from here, assign homework. I don't use, I would play live if I had a face-to-face -face classroom. I'm really, really, really not recommending that you play this on Zoom because it's really not a good use of the student's time when they can do it for homework. So you click on that and then you have to decide when do you want them to have it finished by, what time, and then you go through all the settings that I went through with you before, and then you hit ready, host the game when you're ready. Okay. And then you get a link and there you, now you share this link and they can play right from here. Okay. Um, and then what I didn't see it and um, Justin asked about is there an embed code at all like could we embed this within an LMS or on a website. I don't think there's an embed code for this. Okay. I, I think it's a link. It's only a link. Okay. Um, yeah, there's some questions about okay again the, back to the sharing for a second. Mm -hmm. So I think people are maybe a little bit confused about this because they're asking about sending the link to a Zoom session. Right, because people want to play the game on Zoom. And I just, I'm really just trying to instill a little bit of pedagogy in here that I really don't, I mean, you can do it and the students can play the game while you're in the Zoom room. I just don't think it's a really good use of time. Um. So oh, I think maybe the question is, you want to share it with the Zoom invite? So do this in advance when you send out the invite? Maybe. Maybe, yeah. The, it's, the questions are not entirely clear, but it is possible, right? If you're, you could post that link or add that link to your Zoom invitation going Correct. to the students. Correct, you could and say, do this before you come to class. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about, Susan, have you talked about flashcards? No, this is new. All? I have never seen this before. <laughs> it's okay. brand new, but apparently you can now make flashcards. So let's click on the link and see. <laughs> there you go. You can actually give the, look at this. Now you can send your students some flashcards so they can study in advance. Nice. This is very nice. And you can just hit the space bar to flip. So now this is a new feature of Zoom that you have these flashcards. Okay. Um, Should we see. go on to Quizlet? Quizlet? 
let's see, let's just get these last questions here. Do you happen okay. to know, is there any way that a student could pause the quiz? So they've started the quiz, but they want to pause it. Do you know if a student could do that? No, and I just usually tell the students, take it a second time. Okay. Because there, it is based on speed and accuracy. So if they pause, they might as well not finish. Okay. So just stop and I have it so they can take it unlimited times. Okay. And can you show us one more time where that flashcard button was? Yes, if I can find it again, because <laughs> <laughs> it's brand new. <laughs> Let's see if I can spell quizzes. And um, let's go back to my quizzes. And I think we just hit the game. And we went to assign homework, host the game. And then we saw, yeah, right here. There's the flashcards. Now, how you send these to the students, that's a good question. I guess you'd have to send them. I don't know. This will work. This long link. I, I'm not really sure. I wasn't. Like, I wasn't prepared for this one. <laughs> we should probably move on to Quizlet. Okay. So the, the videos, there's, there's actually three videos, Teacher Tech, Two Minute One, how to use good uh, classroom practices with quiz, quizzes, and how to use collections. So now we're going to move on to getting a Quizlet account. And some of you might already be familiar with Quizlet, um, but there are some new features to share. So I'm going to start from just like I did with the other one from the very, very beginning. For a person who has never been on Quizlet, you are gonna go to quizlet.com and you're going to download the app. And Quizlet kind of wants you to download the app. You don't really have to, but it, it encourages you to download the app often. <laughs> so it's my, it might be just the best thing is to download the app. So after you do that, the next step is you have a choice again. My choice is always to continue with Google, but this one you can also do Facebook. But if you want to do your another account, you have to go through all of this. And you have to put your birthday in here because students who are under 13 are not allowed to be on Quizlet without a parent. So it requires your birthday for that reason. So you put in your birth date. If you want to lie, I guess you could do that. You, you create a username for yourself. You create it, you put your email in there, your password, or you do the easy way and continue with Facebook or Google. Now, you're gonna get here and you're gonna see, try it free for 30 days, start your free trial. Do not click on that button on the right. Do not, do not, do not click on that button. If you click on that button, it'll ask you for your credit card. So what's your, okay, because of the coronavirus, Quizlet is giving teacher Quizlets for free. And Anthony, can you chat the link for that so people can go there? You have to go through that link to get the pro version for free. So did you? Um, Claire, yes and no. I will, she asked, do students have to create an account with Quizlet? And it's yes or no. Um, and if you're, okay, and Suzanne says, if you're working with a school account, can you download the app um, on your laptop? It's difficult because of the um, protocols. You don't have to download the app. It's just annoying if you don't. So yeah, you can do it without downloading the app. So did, the, did this get chatted out to everybody? Yes. Susan, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you I'm going to show you what would happen normally. Um, if you go this way, it's going to be free for you. I don't know how for how long, but I want to show you normally. So in case you don't do this and six months down the low road, you want to do it, how to get away without that credit card thing. So here, you're going to click here. You're going to see this and you're going to say, I don't want to put my credit card in there. But if you look to the very top right of the screen, I have a red arrow here. This is the only way to get to the free version. And it's in really small print. So you have to remember to look at the top right and go or continue to the free version. You'll have to, you'll have, to have this slide to remember how to do that. So once you get there, um, 
you're going to see this button unless you get the free version. I mean, the upgraded version, you're going to, you're going to see this button all the time because they're going to continually remind you to get the teacher version. But again, just like in quizzes, you can find your quizzes by using the search button. So I did a search for adjectives. And here are all, oh, sorry, sorry. Here are all the different, all the different uh, adjectives. Now, they have premium content now. So you want to make sure you search for just free content because premium content is not free. And I usually do sets. There are, the study guides are not free. So I usually do sets and I created by all because I don't really care who creates them. I want to browse through them. So here are the adjectives ones that I have and I can just pull any one of those into my account. So if you want to create a study set, you just click on the start now because you are brand new, you have no study sets. So I, I, again, you have to, I have this in here twice because it's going to ask you, you're going to see this one. You're going to click start now on the top of the screen on the bright turquoise button. And then the next one is going to see the same button, but it's going to say create a study set. So you have to click that twice. And now you can create a set. So I'm going to now take you into the my Quizlet account. So these are all my um, all my sets that I have. And here's like parts of a car, washing your hands. Here's the alphabet. I did this for a really low level. So this is a straight flashcard set. The students can hear the word. They can see the letter. And then I have a, a word next to it for A is for apple, B is for baby. I made this for my uh, low beginning class, but I didn't really want to go through the alphabet. So I wanted them to be able to just practice and see basic words with each letter. So that's the why I made that set. Now, you can see here, I'm going to, let me just create one real fast for you. Let's talk about uh, uh, quizzes, quizzes vocabulary. New words. So the first word is teleport, right? So I can put in here teleport. Now, automatically, I can click on image, and it will look for images of teleporting. <laughs> so I don't even have to have a image on my computer, I can just turn it and then look, it has different, um, different meanings. But from my meaning of teleport is find extra questions from other exams, something like that. Now it has a lot of languages, I don't know how well it, um, it translates, but it does have a lot of different languages. There's more than these. These are the ones I've used recently, but there's like Russian and Arabic, there's all kinds of languages in there. So that's basically how you do it to make your own. And you just, when you're done, you have to have at least four items. You click the create button and you have a, a quiz that you've made. So now let me go back to one that I've actually made. Leaf. So here's one that I made with the alphabet. And here I have all these activities. I make those flashcards once and you get all these activities. So the one that I really want to, share with you is the learn activity. The learn uses brain research and it gives the students words and either they don't know it, they're familiar with it means they may have gotten it wrong once or twice when they were going through the slide set or they've mastered it. That means they've gotten it right so many times that Quizlet knows that they have learned this word and it brings back words that they don't know to review with them. So here we go. So this is the ocean. So the word, the letter, because I'm doing the alphabet, is O. So I click on it. Oh, I got it right. So let's get one wrong. Yarn. Let's say this, for example. So now I have a choice. I can, in this case, I, it will, you can even hear it, but I don't, I don't think I hit the listen button. There is audio here. Um, so I got it wrong. And it's going to come back at me later. So this is the learn activity. Really, really love using this with students. Um, and then it has write. So here is egg. I think the answer is E. 
because we're just doing vocabulary. Let's see if I got it right. Yeah, I got it right. So um, that's what the right is. It's hard to do this with the alphabet. There's a spelling, which I, the students love because spelling is always hard. And then there's the match. Now I'm going to take you out of the alphabet because it's kind of too easy for us. And let me go back to my quizzes here. One more. See if it's going to take me back. One more. And this is one that I made for the parts of a car. So this is called a diagram. And to do a diagram, if you recall correct before when I, I'm going to show you again how that is real easy. You just bring in a picture and then you can put in the different terms that you want there. So let me show you this. Um, let me go back to my account. And we, I'm going to, um, here's one I just made recently. So I just bring in this map. So you just can click and you can zoom and you can zoom out. You just import any picture you want and then you can put little um, terms on it. So let's, let me actually, I don't have a picture that I can actually edit with you guys on here, but um, okay, we'll just create one. We'll try. I want to find my, here we go, create. So I can bring, here's, here's where you choose an image. I don't know what I have on my computer to choose. But I'm sure I have been taking a lot of screenshots. So here we go. We'll put the screenshot in there. It's quizzes vocabulary, so that's good. So now you see how I get this little crosshair on, on the screen. It says click to add a point. I just click here and say start. And I can change the language, but I'm just going to say add definition. Begin here. Add. So now I have a circle. You can do, if you have the pro version, you can do rectangles. You can pan the image and you can add a shape. But when you're on the free version, you can only hit the um, circle. You can only do it this way. Uh, web address. So you see how easy it is to add points in for um, join code, code two. So that's how easy it is to do this. So you can add diagrams as well as having flashcards. Okay, so let me go back. I don't wanna create this. Oh, I'll create it. Okay, there we go. Go back to my sets. So I showed you how to do a diagram and I showed you how to do cards. So now I think I have a game that we can play. Yes. So we're going to try a game. This is called Quizlet Live. So um, I've never, I want to say that this is a new individual version of Quizlet Live before you, it was made for in the classroom, but this is made for individuals. So we're all going to play this together. Um, it is on descriptions. It is adjectives. So um, let's go ahead and you're going to go to www.quizlet.live and you're going to put in the join code. Should not need the app to do this. This is exciting because I've never done this before. <laughs> this is a brand new feature. So we have 41 people. We have 111 in the room. Be interesting to see if we can get 111 people in here. I don't think so. Okay, it seems like 63. It stopped at 63. Okay, here we go. Enjoy. Start game. All right, so now you're playing the game. Okay, I finished. Click to continue to stats. And you can see here what you did well with, what you should study. Um, let's see, exit game, as I played, and let's see the report. The reports are down over here. 
So let's see where the report shows up. Okay, that's my students. So these are my stats, but I don't know where my class report is. Yeah, I'm not sure where the, where the report goes on this, but you can do it and it's fun. Um, and the students can do it from, they can do it on their phone during Zoom. I don't know that they can do this at home unless they're, you're, you're telling them at a certain time, they all have to get on there at the same time still. So that's something I don't like about, I like quizzes better than Quizlet, is that they kind of have to be online at the same time while they're doing it. Yeah, Adriana, the curly hair picture didn't show up for me either, and it's probably my fault. I probably don't have a picture in there. Um, if you have pictures in there, they will show up, although they show up very small. So what questions do you have? Somebody said they couldn't see the questions at all. Um, yeah, this is new. I had never done it before. Um, I was telling people that Quizlet Live really wasn't appropriate anymore uh, for Quizlet Live wasn't appropriate for the remote classroom, but now they made this individuals, but you still kind of have to be all online at the same time. So not sure I like it. I do like quizzes better, quizzes better for that. And again, I have two videos here for you, how to use Quizlet and the teacher guide for Quizlet. So in the slide deck, you'll be able to watch those videos in case you have questions you don't know. Marisol, repeat about what you said about Quizlet or quizzes. Repeat what? Susan, I think you were, you were talking about why you might choose or use one oh. versus the other. Okay, so quizzes is great to send out to your students for uh, formative assessment. Quizlet is better as a vocabulary tutor for students so that they can review vocabulary words. And the PowerPoint will be linked with the OTAN website with all the videos in there soon. Correct, Anthony? Uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to get them up there as quickly as we can. Correct. Usually the, usually the, um, the uh, PowerPoint slides and other resources will get there first. The recordings will get there later. Susan, just, I have a question about the Quizlet. Did we do the individual or did we do the teams? You did the individual one. We did the individual. Yeah. Okay. The teams one, you have to have the students face to face. Okay. This is made so that you can be live. You still have to be live. That's the problem with it. Got so it. you can have the students compete at home, but it's still got to be done live. Okay. Um, do you see Thomas's question? Maybe we could um, just kind of recap how you build those sets. His yeah. question is, is there a way to pull individual cards from one set into another set? Uh, let's look. So here's a, so again, um, it doesn't have that teleport option that um, quizzes has, which is so nice. But um, if you, you can, so let's say you can search for something. Let's start with that. Let's search for past tense. And then I see all of these. So these are, so now I have to be careful because did I say free? No, see, I put all. So some of these I know are not free, especially when they say best seller on them. So I needed to go back and get free. So here we go. Let's just take this one, see if I like it. So now it's in my account. I don't have to duplicate anything. I can go through and see what's in there and I can edit it. Maybe it's here. Print, info, share, custom, ah, customize, there you go. Now we can do it. So it's customized here. Customize, let me go back. If I had that much problem, we go back a little bit slower. <laughs> right here, it looks like a copy icon. It's called customize, you click on that, and then, then you, are, you can change it and do whatever you want with it. But you can't teleport. So I don't know if you would want to use breakout rooms in Zoom. Suzanne asked, can you use breakout rooms to form teams and do Quizlet Live? I don't know if you want to use breakout rooms because, in the, because the students are teamed. They, you could be on Zoom and tell your students to, 
I don't know if your students are on the phone with Zoom, but if they're on the phone with Zoom, they have to like switch out of Zoom to go to Quizlet or click on a link from a chat box to go to Quizlet. And then you could play Quizlet individual, but you wouldn't put them in breakout rooms because the Quizlet is gonna define their groups, not the breakout room. And that would be really confusing if you made breakout rooms and students weren't in the right team. So um, Betty asked a question and what, that was what Anthony and I were just searching for how to do. So you go to a, you, you do a search. I'll go for you again because it was, it's changed. You do a search for let's do standout, no, let's do ventures. Ventures, let's see what we got in ventures here. Okay, we got a lot of different terms with ventures. Let's do ventures uh, textbook or unit, unit one. Let's see what happens because ventures has different meanings. <laughs> so here we go. So here's ventures one, unit one. So I want to grab this because I'm teaching ventures and I'm starting my unit one. So what I'm going to do is here's the, the ventures unit one. I'm going to go over here to customize, and I'm gonna grab it. That's how I grab it into my account. And now I can make changes to that and do whatever I want with it. She has a, she has a um, diagram in here, but no name. So I added that point and then here are her cards that she has. So now I'm going to say create. And I have the link. I can share it on Google Classroom. I can share it on Remind. I can add it to my class or a folder if I have classes, different classes. But here's the game and the students can just play it. So I like to learn. And so this is zip code. And we'll make this one wrong. So that, that all these games are automatic. As soon as you um, put it all in there, it all comes. Okay, Susan, and, and then Thomas was also asking, okay, so if I have these sets in my account and I have questions, so let's say, for example, I have three sets and I'd like to take five questions from set one, five questions from set two, and five questions from set three and put them into a new set. Do you know how to do that? Basically, he's, he's wanting to like recombine questions that he has in various sets into like a new set, for example. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Quizlet makes that easy to do. You'd have to copy. It doesn't have that beautiful teleport option. But no, 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 sets that you already have. Right, like, but you have to go through them in one by one and pick it out. It's like, I don't think there's any way to, okay. to see. I mean, I don't know the answer actually, but I, I, as far as I know, um, you can't do that kind of thing. Okay. Sorry, Thomas. This is a question to research. Can students access, yes, your students can access your sets with the link that you send them and they don't need to sign into Quizlet, but Quizlet will ask them to download the app. And then Paulina says, as far as I know, when you create a Quizlet, you have the option of making it only editable by me, correct? In which case other people would be able to use it, would not be able to use it. If you make it visible to everyone, they will be able to edit it. Yes, that's, that is the answer. And then Michael asked about, so quizzes is better for formative assessment, correct? I think so. I think uh, Quizlet is better for reviewing vocabulary. And Susan, just, um, one more question about the Quizlet was, um, what's the difference between a set and a folder? Okay, so in Quizlet, um, a set is just a set of cards that you make, just like you, oh, and one of the things that's really cool about Quizlet is you can print the cards out if you want your students to print them out and actually have physical flashcards, they can do that with Quizlet. Um, but a set is just a set of, of flashcards. A class is where you, if you have multiple classes, you can make, create a class and put sets inside your class so that your beginning one group has their own, has some sets and the beginning two has some sets. And the downside to that is, if you do that, you won't get statistics from them unless they're logged into the class. So that would require students to actually log into an account. 
if you do, if you don't put them in classes, then students can actually just take the link and play the match game and you'll get their data.